Hi, welcome to uh, another episode of Raycom TV uh, on Wizicom this time. And we, we are a socially distanced Raycom TV. There's only me here. But uh, what I want to talk to you about, you know, it's interesting social distancing. It's something that we're all having to do now. And it's, it's all about getting uh, the required number of people into a space in a safe way. And there's something that we can refer back to there uh, in the world of, of, of RF and in, in management of the spectrum. You know, how to get as many frequencies as you can within the, the space that you've got um, in a safe way. And one of the best ways of doing this is with DME. You know, it's a new part of the spectrum we're allowed to use. It's wide and there's loads of space in it. You know, there's lots of space because there's not so many people using it yet. But uh, there's still a lot of space to be, uh, to be taken up as we go through. So we're going to talk to you today about DME. There's uh, DME from Wizicom. Uh, two transmitters that, uh, we're, that we have available at the moment, the MTP41 single battery and the MTP40 dual battery. You can see them here with their, their nice little sexy short aerials, higher the frequency, shorter the aerial. So these are lovely. And uh, so we're gonna, do, uh, we're gonna do a warp test as we normally do, just to show you that the range capabilities uh, of this product are still very much the same. Um, working with the MCR54 new four-channel receiver from Wizicom um, in its DME mode, because I mean that's you know wonderful capability. That product can go from 470 all the way up to 1160 at the high end of, uh, of DME. So we're going to use the DME spectrum with a couple of DME transmitters and, and see see how it goes. Which um, you know we have a lot of faith in this, and I think you know it should work very very well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand you over now to to Piers, who is outside ready to go. Uh, and, and start the walk test. So, uh, Piers, Hello, you, are you there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm uh, standing underneath the aerials at the moment. Um, just before we start going off, yes, so DME um, obviously is a fairly new thing. Um, and I remember going a few years ago now to a, a presentation in Baldock um, at the monitoring station there by a, a gentleman called Vaughan John, who's been the sort of the the pioneer of, uh, of getting DME through and getting it licensed uh, at Ofcom, and he certainly deserves a round of applause for that because it's a uh, it's a jolly good band. It's the closest band that is, is possibly available for PMSE use to the existing UHF band. So propagation is similar, or, although more of that later. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got uh, quite a bit of frequency spectrum available between 961 and 1154 megahertz. That's all licensable. Um, but what we're going to do is go for a walk. Um, now, I've not actually done this yet. As usual, we like to sort of find out live how it's going to go. Um, but because we're at a much higher frequency, we're using a frequency that we license on 962.650 megahertz hertz today and uh, we are uh, going to see how far that goes relative to a normal 600 megahertz channel that we would we would use um, and uh, because it's a higher frequency the losses through buildings and through earth and through people is a lot worse so I'm expecting uh, there to be a, a few more dropouts than we would normally get on UHF but uh, I guess we should start walking and uh, and, and have, have a look so um, yes as I say we've got a couple of arrows in the usual position that for, we use for all of our walk tests and um, they are uh, Wizicom antennas that are uh, I'm not sure if uh, there are any other antennas that are available that do that whole band but uh, they're certainly uh, pretty much unique in that they do four, uh, 410 megahertz all the way up to uh, uh, 1.2 gigahertz so that literally covers all of uh, the communications band right up to um, DME which is what we're using now. Now these have a nominal forward gain of about six at 6 dB we've got I've used some very short feeders uh, because the losses in cable are significantly more as you go up in frequency um, so I've used um, I've, I've used a sh short cable to keep the loss to about uh, one and a half dB I measured on the, the feeder so we have got a little bit of feeder loss uh, but I didn't want to use active aerials again because uh, you know, we like to keep everything consistent across all these walk tests that we do um, so yeah I hope you've uh, seen some of the other ones we've done if not do make sure you uh, subscribe to our channel and have a look at the other ones but uh, as I say this this is DME um, which probably a lot of people are scared of because they've not used before and uh, uh, it's up in the aircraft band and worried about interference but uh, in actual fact uh, the incoming interference from DME is much reduced uh, if you use fr uh, frequencies in between the exact megahertz so if you use say 962.35 and 8 megahertz or thereabouts uh, um, as the decimal points, you keep away from the actual DME bands and uh, there's 
very little chance of any interference coming in. Um, these frequencies are incredibly clear. Uh, one of the advantages of them relative to UHF is the amount of noise you get from things like lighting and monitor screens. And uh, don't go into the car, George. <laughs> we always had a, an amusing accident there. Yes, yeah, so the, the, uh, the noise coming in from all of those uh, sources of interference that you normally get is pretty much gone by the time you get up to DME. So you get a big advantage uh, of noise floor. We're not expecting to see that huge advantage here because when we've done walk tests on 600 megahertz in the past, um, the noise floor is very, very low where we are on 600. So I'm expecting this to be quite a bit worse than we would get uh, with UHF. One of the main reasons for that is as you go higher up in frequency, you get a, a just pure physics alone means that for every time you double the frequency, you get 6 dB more path loss. In other words, the dis for, for, for any given distance, your signal is going to be 6 dB lower, which is a quarter of the power. Um, which actually equates in free space to half the range. So in theory, you would get half the range. Uh, now, the other thing that comes into play is the losses through buildings, through uh, any kind of obstructions, particularly people. So if you've got a mic on, uh, on, on a person, the loss through that person is going to be a lot, a lot more as they move around, but uh, not, uh, not hugely. But uh, we're, we're using a 962, uh, as I said, which equates to about 4 dB greater uh, a path loss than you would get uh, at 600 megahertz. Um, as I said, 6 dB per octave, 6 dB every time you double the frequency. So I'm going down the, the ramp now, which uh, if you've seen the other videos, uh, you may be familiar with it, uh, has quite a bit of earth um, uh, in, the, in the way between me and the antenna. So I'm probably expecting some slight dropouts here. Um, but it seems to be okay so far. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sounding, sounding good back here. and. And I guess you're probably about 50% of the distance that uh, that we achieved with the UHF test. Probably not quite or, yet. Or, but, already, yeah. or you're pretty close. So you're yeah, we're just uh, we're just coming up to the. Of course, you can't see me, Andy, but we're we're just coming into the car park. Just coming into the car park at the bottom of the ramp. Uh, well, I had a slight drop out there. Not not surprised to be honest, because there's an awful lot of earth in the way, as you'll see behind me. Um, so as I say, we, we license this frequency. It's very, very easy to do now uh, with Ofcom. Uh, just go to the PMSE Ofcom site and license it like any other frequency. It costs £8.50 per frequency for 48 hours, or you can license them for longer periods for much uh, smaller amounts of money. Um, as I said, incredibly clear frequencies. You've got so much spectrum up there to use, uh, so really good for camera links, uh, keeping them away from your UHF radio mics, or indeed uh, to move everything up there to make sure that you, you, you just know you're going to have clean spectrum wherever you go. Uh, so as I say, £8.50, not, not expensive to license, uh, very easy to use, and as I'm quite surprised to see, it's, it's actually giving performance very, very similar to what, uh, what we were getting with the UHF. Yeah, you must be getting going close to the river now. We are just so. about coming up to uh, the gate towards the river. Oh, another slight drop out there. I'm, su I'm surprised it's as good as it is at this point, to be honest, because we are, uh, there is quite a lot in the way. So yeah, we're just uh, coming onto the towpath by the, by the river. Another slight drop out. Um, so yes, um, this, this really is something that uh, is going to be quite exciting. Now, of course, DME, by its very nature, is a completely global band uh, because it's used by aircraft for... DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment, which was designed in the 1950s, um, and it enables aircraft to know basically where they are relative to ground-based beacons. Um, it's for, for navigation purposes, but uh, as I say, almost every aircraft in the world has got at least one DME transceiver in it. So it's going to be around for a long time all around the world. At the moment, DME is only licensable in the UK. Uh, but I see no reason why... A few more dropouts there. Uh, I see no reason why that uh, can't change uh, in the years to come, uh, as, uh, as, as it's seen in the UK. No aircraft are falling out of the sky as a result of DME, which is really not going to happen. I mean, Ofcom did some incredibly destructive tests, deliberately trying to interfere with aircraft on the ground at London City Airport and going right near to DME uh, beacons, trying to overload it with huge amounts of power that obviously they had special permission to do when London City Airport was actually not flying. It was uh, just an aircraft taxi around on the on the tarmac they used to test it, and they, they just couldn't interfere with it. So this is quite safe. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got to remember that, I mean, that it was Ofcom that decided that this was a suitable part of the spectrum to use. You know, it's not it's not like yeah. Wiz, Wizicom have developed it and come along and said to Ofcom, could you possibly let us exactly. have DME? You know, 
they, they were sure that this was going to be a, 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 good, a good space to, uh, to be able to And I have to say, you know, hats off to Ofcom. I mean, it, 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 no other country in the world has taken this kind of initiative to, to, to find an alternative to UHF because at some point in the future, it's, it's, it's almost a given that uh, UHF television is going to move off of UHF. Uh, and bearing in mind that PMSE is a secondary user, that effectively means that PMSE will have nowhere to go if there wasn't DME. So this really is a, a, an opportunity to future-proof. And, and as I say, to, to, to turn up at, at particular, you know, I've been on sites for uh, major television shows where you've got lots of lighting, lots of, uh, of LED uh, wall, uh, walls and uh, you know, uh, video screens and lots of SDI video, all causing terrible interference to UHF. And literally, you get up, you could put it on the spectrum analyzer, you get up to, uh, uh, you get up to DME, and there's absolutely nothing. The noise floor is just thermal noise. So, uh, the in other words, the theoretical noise you get when there's just, just from background radiation like the, the sun and uh, and so forth. So, it is, it really is a, a very exciting thing. And I can honestly say, I'm still very much. Uh, uh, getting on. Oh, there's, there's Shane, our, fa our favourite UPS driver. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, we see him every day. He's uh, wondering what we're doing. We're just coming up to, can you guess where, Andy? Can you guess which street we're coming up to here? Uh, I should probably imagine it's going to be near Caldecott Avenue. Um, <laughs> it but, actually and, is. I mean, that, I mean, you're a long way up there. There were a couple of little flutters then as you, yeah. were, as you were going well, up Well, I'm there, not but, surprised. But, I mean, you're well over half the distance that we, that we achieved with UHF. So. Yeah. Well, well over. I mean, to be honest, we're, we're coming up to the point now where we're actually at the same range. So I'm actually quite surprised. I think possibly this is, a, again, a result of the noise floor being even lower than it was at UHF. Because, as, as I say, as you go up in frequency, the, 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 the sort of the background noise level just, just reduces. And uh, well-known sources of interference just don't produce that noise. I mean, S I mentioned SDI video, which is obviously something that we have to live with on uh, almost every television shoot and film shoot. Uh, that is absolutely terrible. That sprays out RF, particularly around the 600 megahertz area of the spectrum, and you know the 470 to 700 uh, UHF spectrum. And there really is very little um, in this band. So yeah, it's, it's a very exciting prospect for the future. And yeah, it's starting to go. Now we're, we're coming up. Let me just uh, find a place. Right, let's, let's come back in. I'm actually just coming up to the post office. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm now at the Cheltenham Road post office, and. Uh, this is actually, this, is, this really is, this is very similar to what we're getting on. Oh, let me find a place for him. Okay, well, I think we'll probably call it a day here, but this is, uh, um, this really is incredible. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, we're at the post office, which uh, we'll, we'll uh, put, put a, a, a measurement up, but I think this has got to be about 600, uh, 650 metres or so. Yeah, I mean you're clear. You're clearly at the uh, the unusable. Okay, usable I've taken I've taken the transmitter so. out of my pocket, holding holding it up so uh, yeah. you can hear me. But yeah, I think uh, we have to say that this is uh, this is actually a very very good indication of what you can expect to get with DME. Um, so there's absolutely no reason to be scared of, of using DME from a sort of a range or performance point of view. Yes, very good. Well, uh, certainly up until the last sort of 20 or 30 yards there, you were getting a good, clunk, strong, uh, strong, clear signal. So, and that, that is, uh, that is oh, a great right. distance. Very, very impressive. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, thanks very much for watching, and uh, do do get in touch with uh, with Raycom or uh, any of the uh, Wizicom dealers uh, that that we have in the UK about uh, DME equipment, and we can advise you on. Uh, aspects of it, including licensing and antennas and everything. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. Thanks for watching. Good, thanks.